every marine protected area, terrestrial protected area, has to be developed with and through the local community. So that is uh, essential for the small, what we call locally marine managed areas, up to the large areas. There has to be coherence between those in terms of management, jurisdiction, effectiveness, Within the Pacific, many countries have made major commitments for marine protected areas. In fact, now about 9% of the total area of the Pacific is under a commitment for marine protected areas. But to make a coherent network, what is needed is to strengthen the linkages between countries, the linkages between the fisheries agencies, the environment agencies, those managing marine protected areas, and what is needed is to strengthen the capacity of the agencies that are involved in the management in terms of surveillance of marine areas, information about marine areas, and effective management. That is what's required for a coherent network. The session was a journey across four marine mammals protected areas. We go through the Pacific Ocean, the Caribbean region, the Northwest Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea. This presentation was to uh, see different initiatives for marine mammal conservation. These species have long range uh, and very large living areas. Uh, they are migratory species. so. We have to design sometimes very large MPAs or to develop some cooperation work between MPAs. We have the honor to welcome the Polynesian Ministry in charge of our environment and culture. He presents us the Polynesian Marine Mammal Sanctuary. We also have a discussion with Fanny Dubois, the Executive Secretary of the Pelagos Sanctuary in the Mediterranean Sea. She explained how this international agreement is working for marine mammal conservation. We uh, have also a great announcement uh, given by Christophe Lefebvre in charge of international relations at the French MPA agency. We will sign in the coming days an agreement with Park Canada and the French MPA agency. In the technical uh, application of this global agreement will be a technical cooperation between the Agoa Sanctuary in the Caribbean region and the Saguenay Saint Lawrence Marine Park in Quebec. Coherent networks of MPAs are vital to the overall success of a healthy marine ecosystem. Um, although in designing networks of marine reserves we, look, we draw lines on maps, ecological systems don't follow those lines. So whether it's a small reserve close to the coast, a large offshore reserve or something um, out in the ocean, we need to ensure that each of those reserves are complementing each other to be most effective. Maybe making some synergies, uh, you know, with um, all uh, the stakeholders inside to try to work together. Because sometimes uh, the solution is not only uh, within protected areas, uh, but also they are influenced by things that are happening outside the boundaries. So it's important to integrate all these stakeholders and all these organizations that work uh, also outside and that are influencing. The, the, the area. We can make this network more coherent by sharing our knowledge, sharing our skills, and about uh, working cooperatively to ensure that all places are protected. remembering the past so that we can step into the future. Um, our ancestors, they came to our islands on these type of boats. But, uh, it took a lot of determination for them to get to the little islands that we call home now. And we're just as determined to get to a huge world conference right now going on. Well, it'll, it'll start in November in Australia. And it's the IUCN World Parks Congress conference. And this is a chance for us to sail there as people of the Pacific Islands to voice um, issues that we see taking place on our own islands because of climate change. I have 
five children, and people can't believe it. But I left my children, it's not a bad thing. What I'm doing is for them. What I'm doing is for the children of Tonga, the children of the Pacific. The message we are bringing to Sydney is if the whole world works together, we can save this planet. as far as the Pacific Island nations are concerned. We have made the Majiro Declaration, which addresses our concerns on climate change. We have made the Samoa Pathway, which talks about partnerships and how we can address these issues of the Pacific. That's the name of the game, or that's important nowadays, is the follow-up. What can we do to make the solutions a reality? MedPan is a network of managers of marine protected areas in the Mediterranean. They created MedPan in 2008 with the aim to work together and to work together not only uh, in their current activities of management, but also uh, to put these activities of management of MPAs in the context of the big challenges for the region, related mainly to main conventions. One is the Barcelona Convention for the Protection of the Mediterranean, and the other one is the Biodiversity Convention. Well, in terms of the operational aspects of our work, I would like to remind, for instance, the existence of a specific call for small projects, which is a mechanism that provides funds directly to the managers for the implementation of specific actions of conservation in marine protected areas, as well as, for instance, all the development of the strategy for capacity building of managers of MPAs, or, for instance, all the process to develop a roadmap for marine protected areas. In addition of most of our activities that are more on an institutional level, what I think is crucial in terms of the contribution of MedPan is this support to provide a platform for networking and to really strengthen the linkage between people. And this is an element that is really changing the context of the Mediterranean world for marine protected areas. The Catlin Seaview Survey is a global survey of coral reefs. Um, we've been going to over 20 countries in the last two years. Now Catlin's involved in this project because they're particularly interested in the risks of ocean change. They want to understand what are the implications of those risks. Traditionally, um, it was a very time-consuming process going in and assessing the, the state of reefs. In a dive, typically you could do maximum of about 50 metres, whereas we can do two kilometres photographing the reefs every three, um, three seconds, and we do three of these dives a day. So it's about 40 times faster than traditional processes. So at the end of each survey, we bring all the data back to the University of Queensland, where the scientists then use sophisticated image recognition technology to be able to assess the, the reefs on a, on a massive scale. Now this imagery, once it's processed, is then uploaded into the Catlin Global Reef Record and made freely available to scientists all around the world for the managers of marine protected areas, this is a hugely um, effective tool at both 
being able to assess the health of reef environments and change over time by looking at the, the, the science of the project. This is a hugely powerful tool in terms of public awareness because we can upload this imagery into Google Street View and make it um, available to billions of people around the world. In fact, our images have been the most viewed underwater images of all time. Could you tell us what initiatives are taken to build a consistent network of MPAs at the scale of the Mozambique Canal? Since 2007, there is an initiative from the Indian Ocean Commission uh, that, tr that is trying to identify the representative areas for, you know, for establishing the marine protected areas. And nowadays we, are, we would like to continue this initiative with the Northern Mozambique Channel uh, initiative uh, really to, to seek opportunities on how we can implement these um, uh, findings from the Indian Ocean Commission. In Mozambique we have got uh, three marine protected areas, so we're exchanging you know, all the information that uh, uh, we can gather there and uh, we're learning you know, from each other how to address you know, most of the issues. We are now in touch with Mnanzi Bay, which is in Tanzania, and we are working together in order you know, to create a transfrontier, you know, protected area on that uh, particular area between Tanzania, south of Tanzania and northern Mozambique. And uh, at uh, uh, a regional scale, uh, we uh, have got, you know, our strategic partner, partner is WWF, so we are uh, following, you know, uh, WWF in order, you know, to strengthen and to make, you know, this initiative uh, to become a strong network. We have got the feeling that we need to go much further. The initiative now is trying to support uh, what we call the locally managed marine areas, which is more uh, local fisheries management, working with local people. Uh, and this, is, this will be based on, a, on an experience from the, the southwest Madagascar, working hand in hand with Blue Ventures, uh, and uh, in Comoros, for instance, with the Dahari NGO, and also with uh, many other organizations on the east coast of Tanzania and Mozambique. We are establishing a network of these LMMAs, these locally marine managed areas, um, and we are doing it by country. So for instance, in Madagascar, uh, a network is already ongoing, and those communities are meeting like annually or twice annually, and they are discussing on, on how to improve the management of their areas, of their resources, and how to exchange experiences and expertise between themselves. And we are helping them in managing this network and uh, setting up the link with the government uh, authorities as well, so that we can really move towards a community-based management of the fisheries, but also of the protected areas. From IMPACT 3, which was the third international marine protected area congress held in Marseille, we define a kind of uh, roadmap uh, to our 2020, which is uh, achieving the IG target uh, to build and strengthen the global marine protected uh, area network, which is currently only 3% of uh, the maritime surface. We have decided from IMPACT 3 to implement uh, an international marine protected area agenda. The step behind uh, this uh, World IUCN Congress will be IMPACT 4. IMPACT 4 will be in Chile in 2016 and uh, that will be the last, the last uh, Congress before 2020. By organizing IMPACT 4 2017 in Chile, we will have a new impulse to create more protected areas in Chile, more marine protected areas in Chile. In 2010, Chile has created recently the, a big uh, marine protected areas. This is the Motu Motiro Hiva National Park associated to Easter Island. And, and nowadays we are on track to create other uh, oceanic uh, marine protected areas in Ar Ar Archipelago Juan Fernandez and in other protected areas uh, along, along the country. In Chile today, the, the percentage of marine protected areas is very low, is lower than 4%. The ultimate target should be the, the IG target, which is 10% of marine protected areas. Hello, 
Senegal will be the first country in the world to to have its 200 mile exclusive economic zone EEZ reserved for as a marine protected area. There will be no commercial fishing throughout our waters, uh, and the 80 percent of that and 20 percent will be limited to our local domestic consumption. We're doing this because first of all the fish are not there anymore in numbers. Uh, we're doing this because we feel that a live shark is worth more than a dead shark, that a, a live turtle is worth more than a dead turtle, and that there is money to be made in tourism, in, in ecotourism activities that actually can sustain our food security and our economic security as opposed to harvesting uh, it out for commercial purposes.